In this video, I'm going to explain what a reverse SSH tunnel is and show you an example of one to hopefully either bring you up to speed with what the heck reverse SSH tunnels are or solidify your understanding because at least for me, I know that when I was first exposed to the concept of reverse SSH tunneling, it was very confusing for me. Um, so hopefully a simple example will um, do its justice for helping you along with your understanding. So. Let me start out with this diagram. I'm not sure how helpful this this, this will be, but um, hopefully this will visually explain what's what we're trying to do here. So let's say we have a, a, a service running on port 80 on our local machine where anything on the Wi-Fi network or the network that's connected to it can access it, but anything outside of that across the internet cannot access that service, whatever it is. It's a website in this case. Um, but with a reverse SSH tunnel, which uses port 22 or another port we can specify, um, we can pretty much tunnel that that service through the SSH tunnel. That's kind of redundant. We can we can send that service across the SSH tunnel and access it on a different port, or it could be the same port on our a uh, remote machine across the internet somewhere. So that is conceptually, visually, what we're trying to do here. Let's go ahead and actually do it. Um, on my local network here, I have uh, a, a website at 192.168.1.6, and this is a power monitor. Okay, so I have uh, hooked up to my circuit breakers. I have um, stuff that monitors the energy consumption of everything in my RV. So that's that's what that looks like. But only, like I said, only people on my network can access the this website okay but what if i wanted to access it from a remote server somewhere across the internet that's where a reverse ssh tunnel comes into the picture that's that that'll help us accomplish that so uh at this ip address we're going to basically which is running on port 80 you know we can we can say explicitly port 80 here um and that'll load the same exact web page what we want to do is set up a reverse ssh tunnel so that this remote server over here can access that same exact web page. So what is the IP address of this remote server? What is my IP? And the IP address is 159.223.180.93. Um, and right now, if I go to the, the, if I try to go to my locally hosted website, which is kind of a silly thing to do, but if I go to 192.168.1.6 over here, it's going to hang for a while, but eventually not be able to resolve the website because it can't access it. It's not on my local network. It's a whole separate machine somewhere across the internet in a data center somewhere. So um, we'll let that time out, but basically let's go ahead and set up our reverse SSH tunnel. Um, this is going to look something like this. So let me just type out the command and then I'll explain it. So ssh-n-r localhost colon 8888 colon 192.168.1.6 colon 80, lots of colons, <laughs> and then root at the remote IP address 159.223.180.93. Five, okay, so let's match that up. Make sure we're looking at the same thing here. Um, a, base, a basic SSH session would look like this, SSH root at IP address, and that does match up with that, right? But the reverse SSH tunnel flag is this dash R right here. Um, and basically the argument, you can split it up into two pieces, right? So the locally hosted website, which is at this IP address, the local IP address on port 80, is going to be accessible on the remote machine, remote machine on port 8888. Okay, so let's say that again. So the dash R flag says the website or the service that's running on port 80 at this local IP address will be tunneled through the SSH uh, tunnel, will be sent through the SSH tunnel and accessible on port 8888 on the local host of the remote machine. So let's go ahead and execute that and see if it works, right? So um, we're gonna execute it. The N flag prevents it from actually logging into an interactive SSH session. So it's just gonna hang here for now, but let's go ahead and test it out. Let's um, move this down here, go to our remote machine, 
and there's there's the the failure the timeout from before let's open up a new tab and try to go to localhost colon 8888 hit enter and through the magic of reverse ssh tunneling we can now access our local service our local website on a remote machine through the ssh tunnel which is freaking cool so we can see the exact same type of information over here it's interactive all that good stuff so let's uh, make it look equivalent here and there you go locally hosted on my local network and then this one is being sent across the internet via the remote ssh tunnel or the reverse ssh tunnel uh, and we can access it that way now if we if we close out of this with control c and we refresh this it's not going to load because that SSH tunnel is not active. The only way it's gonna work is if we have that SSH tunnel up and running. You can refresh it and now it's gonna load. So um, I was very explicit about the way that I set up this command, right? So you might have seen the shorthand way to, to write this. You don't really have to say localhost on the, the left side of the command. So this is basically saying, the locally hosted website at port 80 will be accessible on localhost at port 8888. You don't have to say localhost colon 8888. And just to prove that's the case, um, we'll refresh this page and it's going to load just the same as we expect it. Uh, now, there is actually um, a host name associated with this, uh, this service. So if I go to uh, iotawatt, if I try to ping this iotawatt, dot local um, local l o c a l you'll see that should i o t yeah it, it comes back with the same local ip address so we can it doesn't have to be let's move that up it doesn't have to be an ip address it could be a domain name it could be a host name let's swap out the local ip address for iota what dot local and let's see if that works. So we'll refresh this page. And it takes a little bit, but it works, uh, thanks to my laggy internet. Um, so just to prove that it just doesn't have to be IP addresses. Um, the last, one of the last things I want to show you, we'll get out of that. One of the last things I want to show you is uh, the end flag, what the difference does there. So right now, like I said, if you, uh, if you remove the end flag, this is actually going to open up a terminal session on the remote server, just like you would normally with a, a SSH. Um, but in the background, the reverse tunnel exists. So let's refresh that page again. And you will be able to interact with it normally because the SSH server is active and running. Let's do one more example. Uh, I also have this. This could be handy for you. Maybe um, if you have your your actual router for your home network. Mine's at 192.168.1.1. Uh, this is always or generally something that's only accessible on your local network. Let's go ahead and do something very similar with this so we can access my home network's router across the internet via a reverse SSH tunnel um, on this remote machine. So very similarly, we will do SSH and uh, and also in this case we'll we'll pick a different port. We'll do port like uh, 9876, and then we'll type in the IP address of our uh, router 192.168.1.1, and then that's running on port 80 locally. Same same login credentials here, same IP address. We'll go ahead and pull that up, and because I didn't type in the dash n flag, we will actually log into an interactive session. Now if we go to localhost, what did I do? Um, 9876, localhost colon 9876. We should pull up the home page for our router and it looks like it's doing that. There we go. That's about it. If you want to learn about the different types of SSH tunnels, there's a, there's a normal SSH tunnel, there's a reverse SSH tunnel, there's a proxy SSH tunnel. I recommend that you check out some of those videos next. And if you do, I will see you over there.